but you don't know what could be in there. Cave troll, anything. I'll tell you what though, there's nothing like getting out in your Jeep, bumping down some of these fire roads, checking out some of the scenes, exploring, cruising, listening to music. You never know what you're gonna find down these roads. And here's another major piece of farm equipment for the Jeep. This cultivator is clearing the furrows and breaking the dirt between rows of corn. Hey guys, in this episode, I'm on four wheels instead of two. We all know the history of the Jeep by now. It was a machine born out of the necessity of war and molded by the brutality of the battlefield. It grew into the civilian Jeep, a utilitary machine ideal for agricultural use and adaptable to work all kinds of jobs. Its simplicity and ruggedness allowed it to reach destinations other vehicles just couldn't go. It has had many iterations in the last 80 years and has evolved into a very comfortable ride that remains the most off-road capable vehicle available straight from the factory. The CJ5 model had the longest production span by far, lasting nearly 30 years. There are millions still on the road today and I thought it would take you on a ride in mine. So I'll give you the Jeep tour of what I bring jeeping, especially if I'm out here alone in an old rig. 
going over this rough stuff, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to blow out a U-joint or something worse. I've done some damage out here on the trails. I bring a complete socket set that rattles around the back. I bring a little tool bag. I got a huge crescent, quick steel, a bunch of zip ties, good ones, needle nose, wire cutters, regular pliers, needle nose vice grips, stubby screwdrivers. These are good because instead of the long ones you can get into certain things like the uh, idle adjustment for the carburetor, regular strong vice grips, and a pair of gloves. I always bring my pack everywhere with me wherever I go, whatever I'm doing. Um, in here I've got water, two liters, trail money, very important. Simple first aid kit, ace bandage. If you sprain your leg or break something, you're gonna want an ace bandage. Uh, what else I got in here? Mirror, not only can I just verify that I always look good, um, you know, you can use it for signaling people if you know, you're lost or whatever. It's a good thing to have. Flint and magnesium stick. Uh, I got a little flashlight, some snacks, a little knife. There's a lighter in there too. Flint and mag stick, just in case the lighter runs out. I also never go anywhere without my Leatherman. Multi-tool is a good thing to have. Backup knife, backup pliers, screwdriver, bottle opener, everything you can need. I can't tell you how many times I've used this on the trail, whether it's on the dirt bike or the Jeep or what. Little tour of the Jeep. She's fairly well outfitted for what it is. Uh, Bully Dog 8,000 pound winch came on it. I would love to get synthetic line, but it came with steel braided and it does the job. Um, I've used it once, not to rescue myself, but to rescue a friend. Uh, let me pop the hood, do a little walk around. So this has the 258 cubic inch straight six. Um, this was year one of this engine, I believe. This is a 1972 CJ5. Um, first year AMC owned the Jeep name. I believe they call this the Bullnose Jeep. Uh, they extended this length just to lengthen the wheelbase and give a little more room for the new engine. These engines are awesome. They have a ton of torque. They don't fail easily. They get pretty decent gas mileage. It's up around 20. I upgraded this to HEI ignition versus the old points and coil on the outside with a resistor. Those old points distributors, it's nice having original equipment, but the HEI just offers so much more reliability. Uh, it's got a Carter single barrel YF carburetor. It maintains plenty of torque for the thing. Um, it starts right up because it's the vacuum the engine produces is more than enough that you don't even need a choke to start this thing and let it idle. You can see, you know, being in 1972, it, it leaks minimal oil. Most of this is out the breather, I think. Just blown fumes and stuff. For any Jeep, it's worth its weight to get a good battery. This one's from O'Reilly, Superstar Platinum AGM. Um, it's the glass mat inside. It's more insulated um, to protect it against vibration. Make sure you get a good mount. This one's mounted pretty solid to this little box frame thing. Uh, it's got an aftermarket radiator, big thick aluminum radiator. This thing never gets hot. Or the aftermarket radiator mounts that it came with busted off on the trail one day, that sucked. Um, so I made these steel straps and cushioned it to hold it in place but that's not going anywhere anymore, anytime soon. The last owner upgraded to the LED headlights. Those are nice, they're nice and bright at night. It's got the old school KCs, the smiley face headlights. The little smiley face yellow covers are somewhere at home. I usually don't run them because the elastic in them gets old and they'll just fly off on the road. These old CJs, this one's got the factory axles. It's a Dana 30 in the front, Dana 44 in the rear. I think it's a T90. Borg Warner T90 transmission. It's a three speed. It's kind of a weird shift pattern. And the transfer case is factory. I don't remember the spec, but I'll put that in the video. But the nice thing about these old transfer cases is they're all gear driven. There's no chains. So it's much less likely to break. Nice little CB. It works. 
it's old, but it works. Updated radio, um, so I can play off my iPhone. Um, it's got a worn bumper in the front, worn bumper in the rear. Um, this one has a spare tire mount that mounts here and swivels out so you can take the tailgate down. Uh, but those things, it's made so that it carries the rear tire up high and then you can mount two five gallon uh, jerry cans on either side of it. But the thing rattles so much, you know, you get going on the trails and it's doing this, going back and forth and just going clunk, 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 and it's, it's no good. And so honestly, if I was going on a longer trip or far out of town, I would definitely have a spare tire. It's kind of stupid to come out here without a spare, but I'm out here today without a spare. So say what you want. This has got 35 by 12 and a half inch tires. Uh, they're pretty beefy. They're a little old, a little chunked out, but they're not bad. There's tons of meat left, as you can see. These things are grabby. I run them about 20 PSI. The Jeep only weighs maybe 2,500 pounds. I don't know the exact weight. Uh, I'll look it up, but it's so light that it doesn't wear these tires at all. It's got somebody's fabbed roll cage, uh, speaker box in the middle, I made these couple little speaker holders for the rear, so the people, if there's someone sitting in the back, they can listen to music too. You gotta have cup holders, that's a must for when you're drinking your soda while driving. Another strange feature about these Jeeps that people don't like is the gas tanks here. You're sitting on top of it. I think it's a 10 gallon tank, um, so it's not very big for one and uh, you're sitting on top of it. So if you did have a problem, that's not the safest thing, sitting on top of a gas tank. But whatever, it works, it's fine. It's fine, everything's fine. You got your headlights. I think these are wipers, uh, heat. These switches, this one is the Casey lights up front. This one, I don't believe, is connected currently. It's got the original Speedo that works just fine. The fuel and temp gauges don't work. Um, so the previous owner put in aftermarket oil pressure, volts, water temperature, and I think it did have a fuel gauge here, but I replaced this because the fuel gauge and sender in these can be finicky. I got a new sender that goes in the tank. Um, the nice thing about these Jeeps is everything is available. The aftermarket support, as any Jeep guy knows, is outstanding. You can get anything you want for these things and pimp them out. It's got aftermarket seats, best top. Uh, you know, they're a little worn, but they're firm yet comfortable some side support they're not bad they didn't have seat belts so i upgraded it with a couple of aircraft seat belts that were worn out um, i just bolted it here to the roll cage and put a couple of loops down here and uh you know this thing clicks in and where's the other side of it Well, there's one side you can see you know just like you would find on your passenger planes fire extinguisher this is a really good thing to have on board it's pretty good this one's pretty clean i mean it's dirty but it's not bad it's all there the thing's solid it's got drum brakes all the way around uh they the pedal is stiff but I replaced the wheel cylinders and the shoes and the hardware, the springs and all that. And they work fine. They get the job done. I mean, sometimes when you're going down a really steep hill over some steep obstacles, you kind of got to stand on the pedal, but they work and you can still modulate them fairly well. You, you get used to it. You get used to anything that you're working with. Anyway, that's my Jeep. these old TJs, they can pretty much
pretty much take whatever you throw at them. You don't want to hit obstacles hard and fast, uh, like you can in a razor, but you take things slow and nice and easy, and it'll last, it won't break. When you try to handle stuff hard, that's when you break it. This one's got the old original huge steering wheel, because this Jeep did not come factory with power steering. Um, and when you're going over obstacles, as you can see, the steering wheel kind of goes this way and that. You don't want to keep your thumbs, you know, hooked in here or hold on to these because it'll whip around and they're known to crack your thumb pretty hard if you keep your thumb in there. So you don't want to do that. These old Jeeps are leaf sprung all the way around too. So that gives you a pretty rough ride. On these old mining roads, with decent obstacles, you're gonna be going, you're gonna wanna go pretty slow anyway. But even on the faster fire roads, I mean, it'll take it at speed, but you still don't wanna drive too fast with leaf springs because they just don't offer the suspension performance to keep the tires on the road. So at speed, it tends to slide around a bit. And uh, the other thing with these old CJs is they have a fairly high center of gravity. So if you're sliding into a corner and you catch traction, <laughs> you can, you feel it. You feel the slide side load and with a high CG, it's a little sketchy, not gonna lie. I've taken some obstacles at some pretty extreme side angles. I mean, nothing like, you know, those guys in the King of the Hammers are doing or anything, but you feel like the thing might tip to the side, but honestly, it takes a lot. It takes a pretty extreme angle to get these things to roll over, but it's definitely doable. 90% of the time, you don't need four wheel drive. I didn't even need four wheel drive on that road. It's just nice, you know, there's less tire slippage, so you're not wearing out your rear tires as much in Ford. But it'll climb a lot with just rear wheel drive. There we go. Too high. In four low and four high with the front hubs locked, the steering at slow speeds is a little more difficult. And this thing having manual steering, manual brakes, manual everything, uh, you want all the advantage you can get. So if you can keep it in two, keep it in two. Put it in four when you think you might need it. The views out here though, huh? I mean, come on. I like it. Let's roll. These Jeeps are great, man. I mean, when you're out cruising like this, at low RPM, putting around trails, exploring forest fire roads and stuff, could go all day, even on the little 10 gallon tank. Good idea to take spare gas with you, just in case, but I've gone all day on this little tank. Because the motor just, that single barrel carburetor just sips gas. Another thing I forgot to mention about this Jeep is these old CJs have a compartment, a toolbox down here. It's got a little loop handle. Pull that up. Keep the winch controller in here. Keep a big strap. I've used this once also. A couple D-rings under there. Bungee cord. Spare U-joints. Um, and also there's a spare belt for the alternator mounted under the hood that's zip tied onto one of the cross braces for the uh, grill mount, radiator mount. 
the factory seat was hinged so it would flip forward or back or something so you could access this box easier. Um, so if I was going to hold on to this, I would, I would somehow put hinges in this seat mount so you could flip the seat forward. I would make the tailgate have quick disconnects. This one's just bolted together. I mean, it's easy to get in there with a ratchet in like a couple minutes, um, but that would be nice if the tailgate could more easily flip down. I'd get a synthetic line for that winch up front. Those steel braided lines, you have to handle them with gloves. Even the synthetic ones, you want to handle with gloves, but these steel cables will tear up your hands and they get all bound up and unless you wind them up right, they can be problematic. It's almost like food for the soul, You're getting out here cruising around. Especially on a beautiful day like today. Old rig like this, you want to keep your eye on the gauges time to time. You don't know what's going to go on. Something might happen. I was cruising one time in this thing and me and my buddies, we stopped. We were in kind of a convoy of different rigs. And we stopped and, and uh, this was leaking water. And we hopped out, popped the hood, started checking it out. And the rubber cap that someone had put on the heater line from the engine it was all dry rotted, sprung a leak. Luckily, uh, I keep Gorilla Tape on board in my toolkit, and we just took the hose clamp off, wrapped it up a few times, clamped it back on, and it got me home no problem. Uh, but you run into stuff like that all the time, especially with an old rig. Prepared like a Boy Scout. I'll tell you what, though, there's nothing like getting out in your Jeep, bumping down some of these fire roads, checking out some of the scenes, exploring, cruising, listening to music. You never know what you're gonna find down these roads. This one, uh, this is Senator Highway, so I know what I'm gonna find down this road, but Senator Highway, and just like all the dirt roads around here. There is a maze and a spider web of dirt roads that go in to and out of it and just go every which way. I mean, we got more dirt roads than we do paved around here. And so having a Jeep or a sand rail or a quad or a razor is the best. I mean, I love it.